वेलकम एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस ओपन मार्केट सेल स्कीम ओके रिसेंटली इट वॉज इन न्यूज सी ओके डायरेक्टली इन मेन्स यू पी एस सी विल नॉट आस्क यू नो वेरी लिटिल चांसेस कि वॉट वॉट इज ओपन मार्केट सेल स्कीम फिल्म यू माइट फाइंड अ क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस इन मेन्स जनरली यू पी एस सी आस्क क्वेश्चन ऑन एग्रीकल्चर हॉलिस्टिकली लेट्स वॉट द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर ब्रॉड बेस क्वेश्चन so but uh, and if you understand oms the problems of oms uh, you understand the problems of agriculture that's that is our objective so we will uh, discuss what 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 is happening in oms nowadays what oms is and how we can related with other problems of agriculture fine so what is uh, open market sale scheme it is a scheme run by uh, union government uh, uh, and what the and generally fci does it let's say there is a some excess supply you know excess stock of food grains you know india has to maintain buffer stock of food grains right why why any country has to maintain buffer stock let's say there is some pandemic famine or some vagaries of monsoon so you have to supply food so for that buffer stock is very very important right now buffer stock like any other stock has two cost one is the carrying cost one is the ordering cost carrying cost let's say i stock some inventory or some food or some grain in a in a warehouse so you are maintaining it you have to preserve it there cost involved so these such cost are called carrying cost carrying cost right because you have to st 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 you know stock let's say if you do not maintain that stock so that it is called uh, stock out cost right uh, stock out cost or maybe you have to order again the ordering cost and uh, what would the uh, what would the cost in uh, in the case uh, in the case you do, india does not have uh, uh, food grain people will you know people will uh, feel hunger right um, the problem of malnutrition will rise so we we have to maintain a balance between carrying cost and stock out cost so generally whenever uh, there is excess supply what what uh, uh, fcbl do through open market sale scheme this is an e auction e auction uh, and it is done through ncdex platform it is a platform uh, okay to tell you the technicalities uh, you know department of uh, uh, you know this uh, fci will uh, you know release a circular that we are conducting uh, e auction and so and so date generally it is done every week and the main participants are uh, bulk traders uh, wholesalers uh, faos uh, uh it's uh, states you know although you know now the states are facing problem it states also participate and uh, generally they are, generally i don't say always generally the prices are something above than msp because the uh, government has to maintain right uh, msp is for farmers so here uh, they are selling in uh, open market so they have to uh, they have to put uh, the price something above than msp fine so this is the mechanism uh, Uh, let me read. You know what the official website say, says about uh, OMSS. It says uh, okay. Okay. You see, uh, it, they have just given you know some data. Uh, for instance. 3000 metric earlier 3000 metric ton was being released through you know oms uh, they have just talked about number but that is not important what is the what is happening nowadays there is a problem between union and state and states mainly your karnataka and tamil nadu what these two states are recently what the union government did see in mains examination try to use the word union government rather than center if, if you uh, if you have gone through national constitution review commission and uh, i think it will also help in gs2 paper when you use the word union rather than center you know union include you know union is a more positive term when you say center it's look uh, you know <laughs> so uh, what the union government decided that they restricted the participation of states and karnataka and tamil nadu raised the objection they said uh, they said it is only for the political reason and uh, why they would say that because the governments are different in uh, at you know union and uh, center but what the union government said it is uh, mainly to fulfill their obligation under national food security act you know under national food security act uh, india has to provide food 
to almost 80 crore 80 crore entitled uh, beneficiaries and uh, for, and it is a statutory obligation now national food security act is an act okay so they said uh, we have to maintain uh, for, so that, that's why we cannot release what the karnataka and tamil nadu said okay they also have a targeted pds scheme targeted uh, pds scheme and uh, other welfare schemes okay other welfare schemes but what they said we do not have we are not getting sufficient quantity of grains to uh, provide subsidized food to one level section that that's why they did the action uh, because they cannot buy food from uh, under this omss because the union government has you know restricted their participation so this is the main thing now see if you see the picture holistically the quantum of grain which is being uh, sold through omss is very small compared to you know compared to t uh, what the state uh, supply through through t t targeted uh, pds and other welfare scheme or whatever the center is uh, providing under national food security act so uh, you know compared to that uh, you know supply this is a very small but yes it again shows uh, you know that india need cooperative federalism and not only this uh, see issues like this uh, keep on coming so what we will try to do we will try to understand the problem of agriculture holistically and uh, we will mainly focus on these topics okay let's see the problem of agriculture first the problem of agriculture now <laughs> to uh, you know to discuss problems of agriculture you again need at least uh, maybe i will say uh, even 20 classes are not sufficient but yes uh, you can uh, talk about the main problems the one of the major problem is only 18% of gdp comes from agriculture right and if you if you are following economic survey uh, 2023 almost 48% population is dependent on 18% of gdp can do you see is it sustainable no it is not sustainable at all how how it it is possible and uh, not only see india is uh, now you, you know uh, according to world bank india has attained lower middle class status right or uh, lower or mid upper middle class i think it is lower middle class not not yet upper upper middle class upper middle class status uh, oh, sorry not class income income status and it it is official recognition so as india will keep on moving uh, into higher income group or become developed countries this uh, ratio is going to vary for instance let's say in usa what is happening in usa country like usa you have only 1 to 2% of farmer you know people in agriculture okay and uh, contribution is gdp also so but again those farmers are also in problem so do you see as the country grow you know uh, develops their uh, agriculture contribution to gdp will decrease and the percentage of population increase in uh, involved in agriculture that will also decrease so uh, this ratio is going to be you know uh, again decrease so wh what is the solution let's say if you read uh, uh, Ashok, uh, dr ashok dalwai committee ashok dalwai committee you know it, this committee was on doubling farmer income right so uh, <laughs> there was aim to double the farmer for income by 2022 right Uh, god knows it's now 2023 already they have written 14 volumes 14 volumes they have written uh, it, the, this report is uh, available on uh, web, you know uh, agriculture uh, ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare now the see the, in 2015 they also changed the name see this shows the intent that it is not only ministry of agriculture now it is ministry of agriculture and farmer welfare that's why the farmer welfare becomes so important so in this 14 uh, volumes i would recommend you to invest time in volume 2 and volume 8 right that is my suggestion for me, i am sure uh, for me uh, it is going to help you now uh, see again what are the recommend uh, here we cannot go into uh, all those things see what my objective is when you invest time on the, on those reports you take out you not copy you lift paragraphs and put in your notes you revise it three four times your thought will get deep, deeply embedded in your mind along with this you can do dr ramesh chand dr ramesh chand he is a member niti ayog okay 
he had written a paper on doubling farmer income okay let me see the let me quote the paper uh, it was written in march 2000 march 2017 right <laughs> so doubling farmer income rational strategy prospect and plan uh, i cannot go into the all the recommendation here but i can tell you the main uh, see how what the dr ramesh chand is contesting he, first the thing he contested uh, is it such is it possible at all you are saying you are going to double the farmer's income so he calculated he said this will require at almost 14 15% of growth in agriculture is it possible has india ever witnessed 14 15 culture 14 40 14 15% of growth in agriculture no so this goal itself was you know little bit problematic second thing uh, he is saying what kind of income you are trying to double you know real income nominal income are you considering you know inflation uh, in inflation as well so this thing then uh, here also emphasize that uh, to see it, in two ways you can increase the income one is input cost reduce input cost right let's say the cost uh, cost of fertilizers pesticides and uh, moving towards zero budget farming okay sustainable agriculture this is the way you reduce input cost second thing okay msp is there yeah, you, know, you 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 have to pro, uh, provide you know uh, uh, remunerative prices but he said try to increase the width you know length and uh, you know coverage of uh, msp uh, that is another thing and uh, one more important uh, approach is what the fao called move up and i think this is the most important thing move up and move out why see let's say within agriculture people uh, small the problem is uh, who, is, who is suffering more a small and marginal farmer if you read uh, national for, for uh, see i will recommend uh, you know a, a student writing means invest time in national farmer policy in this language you have to write your main answer okay and do not think it is an old policy no no see policy document whether it's a, uh, read ag agroforestry policy try to lift passages and put in your notes when you invest time they have gone to detail they are saying you have to enlarge the definition of farmer what, what do you mean by farmer not only small and marginal farmer tenants laborers they should also be included in your uh, farmer definition okay now concerning farmer definition i want to tell you one more thing there are two important uh, surveys raised by nsso okay the, these two uh, one is key indicators of uh, agriculture key indicators of uh, agri household okay aapka isme 2018 19 mein i think 17 or 18 mein there was a question in prelims that how many percentage of uh, gs1 how many Uh, GS1 prelims question paper. How many percentage of people of OBC are involved in agriculture? So try to some invest time in there. Uh, and these are the very authentic uh, sources. It is read by MOSP, Ministry of uh, Statistics and Program Implementation. Second report, rep second survey came in 2019. Very important. It was a uh, situational uh, assessment survey. Okay, situational, situational. assessment of agri household okay 2019 please uh, you know isme jo chapter 3 hai key findings key finding of the report hardly 10 15 pages hai but if you can you know it's it's not data it is key finding if you can put that data in your mind if you can relate it you know one one problem with another and write that in your essay main copy or while interview if you can you know link the problem i'm i'm pretty sure if you will invest uh, doc in time uh, in document like this and the uh, chapter given in economic survey or papers like the written by dr ramesh chand uh, you will do well see without agriculture without knowing agriculture you cannot succeed in upsc <laughs> it, it it will catch you in essay it will catch you in gs economy okay uh, 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 and uh, many way maybe in optional uh, let's say if you have optional uh, subjects like uh, sociology anthro uh, how uh, without agriculture one can move forward so coming to this move up and move out what it said you can increase the within agri uh, you know a, a small and marginal farmers and other laborers they have to increase their income through 
integrated farming system through agriculture, you know, through agroforestry, horticulture. And after that, they have to move out, move out into, uh, let's say, uh, secondary sector, tertiary sector, horticulture, horticulture and uh, this thing, your food processing. Food processing is a, you know, big uh, opportunity. In food processing industry, it is also called sunrise industry, it is a link between agriculture and industry. Here, the gainful employment can be created for the rural youth. Fine. Now, I think it is not wise for us to go into the Ashok Dalvai committee recommendation. Uh, but I hope you will invest time and uh, maybe uh, see what one more thing you will do. T take the National Food Security Act. Let's say, you know, you just read somebody here and there. No, hardly seven, eight pages the act. Let's say read it. Uh, when you are reading National Food Security Act, you will encounter words like uh, let's say National Food Security Act if you will read it originally right so you will encounter word like uh, human cycle approach human cycle approach to human cycle approach to okay food security food security so when you will write human, human cycle approach, examiner will understand. The professor who is marking your copy will understand. Okay, you have done that. Now, let's say you are talking about the food security. Now, food security, you have to talk about the three important dimension. One is availability. Availability, accessibility, and affordability. Affordability of food. Now, see, these three, three no dimension on each other. The, Dr. Amartyasen gave you this accessibility dimension through entitlements. Okay, so uh, let's say you are using, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say there is one, one more key, key term in that uh, security act, uh, entitled beneficiaries. This is the kind of language you have to use while writing your beneficiary. This shows that you have invested time in that act and reading original, uh, you know, primary sources always uh, uh, give rewards. Okay, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, almost uh, India is pro providing food to, food grains to 80 crore uh, people. And now you understand, let's say when the union government says, under OMSS, we have to fulfill the obligation and of, uh, you know, a National Food Security Act uh, obligation. This is a statutory obligation. So, uh, union government might be, uh, you know, might be, you know, uh, has to fulfill that obligation. So, there might, might not be sufficient grain to sell under OMSS. Okay. Now, what we will do, see, uh, I will recommend you, uh, I can tell you, let's say, okay, these are the feature of national, uh, national farmer policy this way. Let's say uh, one statement made in that policy is, farmer should be at the center of farming, right? We should talk about not only agriculture productivity, but also farmer income, right? These kind of statement. That not only agriculture productivity, agriculture export, no. Okay, within that value chain, there are many, you know, many people who, but uh, we have to talk about farmer income, farmer wealth. And uh, we have to enlarge the definition of farmer. We have to, you know, uh, take faith in concept like a small farmer, large field. In fact, this was a question in Poland this, this year. You must know it. A small farmer, large field. What it says? It is kind of a small and marginal farming coming together and uh, like a cooperative uh, and uh, this will enhance their bargaining power. Let's say there is each, of, each of the one of them is small fields uh, which cannot, you know, which is unsustainable, cannot, uh, you cannot apply a scale of economies there. So you bring them to many small farmers together. It is like self-helping group. Fine. So I hope uh, this is my recommendation. You please invest time in this. What you do, uh, take this policy, uh, read it, maybe copy some paragraphs and put it in your uh, G, uh, GS mains uh, notes and divide it three, four times. You will see automatically that writing style and that uh, thought process will reflect in your main answer sheet. Now we will talk about something uh, issues related to MSP and uh, then uh, India Agriculture and WTO. MSP. 
minimum support price, right? You know what is MSP? Every year, uh, Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, okay, will approve it on the recommendation of CAPC, right? Uh, Commission on Agriculture Price and Cost. Now, if you go, <laughs> let's say you want to you want to know how this MSP um, is determined. So it's a very rigorous process. The, uh, in in this com in this commission, you will find many experts. Okay, if, experts in the field, professor of agriculture, statistics, right? They, first, they will send questionnaire to different states and organization like FAOs, uh, 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 you know, uh, different states, different uh, departments, and they will ask their opinion. On the basis of this uh, opinion, they will try to they, see. This is qualitative data. Then they will also do quantitative work. They will see, okay, th this year, this was the production, this was the... So they try to mix both quantitative, quantitative and qualitative. See, even your, uh, when, when you do forecasting, let's say some, there is a student of operation management. How do you do forecasting? In forecasting, you, uh, you have both kind of tool, quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative tool is one of, one like uh, name method, Delphi method. In quantitative methods, uh, uh, you know, moving average is there, uh, then the trend method is there, okay, exponential smoothing is there. So, uh, they do all, they apply all the all the mathematics and the economics here and they try to get the MSP for 23 crops, okay. Now, this is the minimum support price. Uh, let's say, the uh, see what happens in agriculture. Whenever there is a harvest season, the, there will be a supply, excess supply and the prices will crash. So, to, you know, and why it crashes because you know 48 percent farmers are involved in that. Uh, so, to give them the minimum uh, income, this MSP is important, but there are again some uh, uh, limitation of MSP. I will say, you know, its uh, coverage is limited, right? Uh, 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 let's say it first of all, it is not declared for all the crops, uh, then uh, it does not cover all, all kinds of farmer, right? Uh, only I, hardly if I'm not. Uh, Mistaken, hardly 5 or 6 percent farmers are covered under MSP. Now, see, one more thing, uh, let's say you want to focus on one problem in MSP and you want to write in the, about that in mains, you can write this thing. You know there are cost, A2 plus FL and C2 cost. C2 cost is more comprehensive, you know, than A2 FL, C2, C2 also increase A2, A2 cost plus FL cost plus uh, I think a cost of cost of capital and imputed cost of labor. But anyway, I'm sure about this thing, uh, cost of capital and uh, also imputed. But anyway, what is the point? This is more holistic. This is more, you know, this is more comprehensive holistic compared to this. So MS, MS Swaminathan Committee, MS Swaminathan Committee, uh, what, what they recommended, uh, I'm not sure whether they recommended 1.5, 1.5 times of C2 or uh, I think they recommended 1.5 times of C2. But anyway, what they recommended is that is a different thing. What is the more important? Let's say one thing you have to know generally when MSP is decided, it is generally 1.5 times of A2 plus FL. So the cost of capital and imputed labor, cost of labor, they generally are not included. And let's say even if you include this, there is also one problem. What you are calculating cost. Okay, you calculated cost and you will you will take the average of this cost. Let's say in Haryana, the cost uh, cost might be 200 rupees. Um, I'm just taking a random, random number. In Odisha, the cost might be 220 rupees. Okay. In Tamil Nadu, the cost might be uh, 110. In GNK, cost might be 190. So you are taking these averages. And on the basis of cost, you will increase. So now you see what uh, what what will happen to the farmer of Odisha, farmer of Odisha, right? Here the costs were high, but the see the the MSP which you declare, the MSP which the, this committee will declare, would would be on the basis of the average of this cost. So again, uh, you understand the this C two C two is the weighted average of all that. But that particular individual state and within that individual state, that individual farmer, how much is it is going to, uh, 
uh, you know, benefit uh, that particular farmer, that is a big question. So this kind of uh, point you have to raise. You understand this? what is the essence of this? This weighted thing, taking a weighted uh, uh, cost uh, uh, as uh, is not a, is not always the <laughs> right thing to do. So, in fact, uh, uh, see th this problem is very similar. Uh, let's say uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden something came to my mind. Let's say, suppose, you know, maybe some, someday you will invest time in this book, Theory of Justice, Theory of Justice by Rawls. Rawls he talks about, you know, social justice and here he talks about, uh, it, it is mainly, I will not say, it is against uh, Tarian or Bentham, right. It is, I don't say, you know, against, but it is try to, you know, uh, find uh, some, uh, def def not even deficiency is not the right word, maybe try, try to make, uh, uh, you know, try, uh, try to find uh, some drawbacks, drawbacks in the utility concept of Bantam. So, uh, Professor, uh, you know, uh, John Dolls. He talk, here he talks about a concept like uh, original position, right? Original position and uh, difference principle. Okay, difference principle. And he talks about max min. Max min. Okay. So, see what, what, what I'm trying to say. Let's say there is a function. 7, 8, 10, 0. You have to find, uh, uh, you have to find the maximum of this. So what is the maximum? Maximum is 10. So uh, le let's say these value came, 7, 9, 10 and 0 came from the, these four values came from the, min there were four function. You took the minimum of each th those. So those minimum, uh, let's say this is function 1. Its minimum is 7. Function 2, its minimum is 9. This way, first you calculate the minimum, then you are trying to take the maximum. So your maximum is 10. So now here also when, <laughs> see what my point is. Here they are talking about the social justice. Here the emphasis on the, you know, dignity of individual. Here the, in utilitarian, it is mainly about the weighted average. Okay, mathematically if you say it is mainly about the weighted average. Here it is talking about the individual. So, and when they do, you know, when you turn pages after pages, when you read them, so they debate on this function, maximum. Why I raise this point? Point this maximum. Uh, okay, see, just now you saw this, right? The pro what, what what was the problem? Uh, this uh, weighted average problem, right? The far farmers were, uh, you know, you, you saw this thing. Uh, that when the CAPC took uh, C2 as the average, so the individual farmer was suffering. So that point is very much similar, you know, same way stated here. Now, you, now, now can, can you see two different dimensions? Here we, we are talking about the, you know, justice, uh, political justice, social justice. And uh, he, there also it is about justice only because you declared C2 cost and it is a weighted cost, but what about my particular state? What within that particular state? What about the individual farmer? He might have, he might have even more cost. So uh, that is the problem with the averages. So averages are good, but not always good. <laughs> Fine. So uh, sorry, you know, it's not <laughs> it is not the right time that we, we will go into that. But yes, what you can do, if if you remember in 2016 or 17. UPSC and GS4, I think they asked. What do you understand by the social justice concept of uh, John Rawls? When you read politi political theory book of uh, political theory book NCRT, uh, uh, there is a wonderful chapter, uh, social justice, and uh, I, I think chapter name is justice. So there you will find this mention. But let's say if you want, you can dev devote some time in the first, at least first two chapters of the, uh, theory of justice, and I'm sure it is going to pay reward. In your essay or uh, essay, or, uh, you can compare even in GS4. Fine. So now, given this thing, uh, 
now we will touch briefly upon uh, uh, indian agriculture and wt issues uh, we cannot go into the, you know too much detail here uh, because that is an entirely different topic but uh, i would i would try to uh, relate it see what is the main problem india and wto not only india mainly developing countries as you know the uh, farmer of the farmer weather of india or weather of any developed country both are suffering even in, in the usa what is happening the the us government has to provide subsidy to their farmers and uh, due to subsidy they are able to export and which sometime in developing countries uh, they object to it why they object they say uh, no you know uh, this is a highly subsidized food and uh, this is a, uh, this is a kind of a, you know uh, adversely affecting uh, india's export so this thing you have to understand first the farmer of every country is suffering now the there is a long story in wto started with the uh, earlier it was gait right then it went into 1995 wto uh, then uh, doha round uh, you know doha round uh, your nairobi 2015 before bali okay and uh, but the main issue is the subsidies and buffer stock see what what happened india has to maintain buffer stock and why it has to maintain buffer stock Uh, because uh, the two things uh, in, in you know population has to need food let's say there is famine or something famine or uh, uh, let's say vagri the monsoon monsoon is not good so you have to maintain the buffer stock and uh, and india has to provide subsidy subsidies to its farmers okay otherwise uh, uh, let's say the, uh, india does not declare msp does not declare uh, you know subsidies on, um, uh, fertilizers uh, Uh, electricity okay or even on seeds farming will become unsustainable what the developed countries are saying they put some subsidies into amber box you know there are di different uh, boxes are simply you know there are different types of boxes let's say you put some subsidy in uh, amber box then you have to uh, the uh, it is obliged uh, developing countries are obliged to remove those subsidies okay so this is one issue buffer stock uh, again uh, uh, let's say if if you maintain buffer stock here also there are some issue now it's not the right time to uh, go into uh, all those thing but three important thing you must know first one thing came peace clause peace clause in 2015 i think it was came in bali okay then you must know also something about you know within aao all these things are under aao agreement on agriculture okay so another thing is transparency clause and third thing is dispute resolution uh dispute settlement body okay dispute settlement body now you understand uh, Uh, you know, developing country side, uh, you cannot provide subsidies, and the subsidies will come in under uh, amber box. And uh, uh, within, you know, see WTO. You you must recall that sir, that uh, WTO was not established under Bretton Woods, but it was an outcome of Bretton Woods, more or less, right? Uh, that is an entirely different sto story. So here you have general obligation. here you have some something some thing are called general obligation like uh, most favored nation if you uh, let's say some some country providing most favored nation you know uh, most favored nation st status to other country then every uh, every country has to be provided then there are some specific specific obligation obligation that is like uh, let's say market access okay market access again eh? you know uh, if you want to provide market th that is not a general obligation general obligation means it will apply to every country but uh, market access you know providing access to a particular country that is a specific obligation now the third uh, you know third kind of rule is in wto agreements if something is not everything is agreed when uh, you know a document is agreed when every part of that document is agreed remember this you know very important let's say there is a some uh, agreement 
and there are 10 clauses in that. If you agree on 9, if the, you know, uh, ministerial conference, MC, right, ministerial conference of, uh, if they agree on 9 clauses, not on 1, then the, it will not be, it will not be agreed. So, uh, the, you, you must know it, you know, uh, something is agreed when everything is agreed. So, these are the, some important uh, characteristics of WTO agreement. Now, what, uh, what happened, uh, developed countries also understand that uh, developing countries and problems. So they came with the peace clause in 2015. What they said, till we do not find that uh, permanent solution, what the, what, uh, you know, developing countries can provide subsidies, provided subsidies less than 10%, right? Now, but there was a transparency clause within this peace clause, there was a transparency clause. And you remember, peace clause came Peace clause was till you know till uh, you find the permanent solution. Tra what the transparency clause said: if the subsidy is more than uh, sorry, if the, yes, now if the, now if the subsidy is more than ten percent, then developing countries has to ad declare in advance. India was against this clause. Okay, India was the, so you have to understand the, you know what the tussle between developed and developing countries. Uh, they agreed with the peace clause. When they, then they brought a transparency clause. Again, the dev, Indian developing countries are in problem. But and why? The, why? The, and what? What is the? Uh, what is the crux of the problem? The problem is that developed countries want uh, developing countries to open their service sector. Okay, right. In fact, they are not too much worried about uh, their farming because uh, in their country, how many one or two percent of population dependent on farming? And they are highly subsidized. No, no, they are not. Uh, that is not the big concern. The big concern is they want develop, uh, developing countries to open their ITBM sector, like uh, India's ITBM sector, finance, right? Finance sector that has to be open for developed countries. And uh, developing countries, uh, you know, let's say they also. Uh, if, if you see uh, what is happening in 2015, there is a backlash against globalization, right? Globalization backlash. So due to this globalization process, main, many developing countries have benefited. So India want to promote it export. You saw recently India came up with the agro, agro export, export policy, right? Uh, how much? $100 billion. What is the target? $100 billion, right? Uh, I do not remember the but anyway. See, if India's first agro export policy, how that, that is the kind of focus they want to have. Uh, so. This is a, you know, uh, both countries, you know, uh, developed countries wanted to want developing countries to open their service sector and they want to, uh, developing countries want to promote their export, maybe in merchandise, agri. So this is the main uh, problem. And uh, gradually, de some developed countries are realizing that due to globalization, they are in problem. Uh, you know, the Trump, Trump came into the power mainly because, uh, because he, you know, he said, uh, I'm going to protect my border, I'm going to protect my race, I'm going to, you know, send Mexico to their home. So, <laughs> that is why he came to power. So, now you see, all these problems are related. Third point which you can mention is dispute settlement body. This was very, very important, right? Let's say they were, whenever there was a dispute, so you could settle this through dispute settlement body. And uh, it settled many, many disputes. If you remember India's solar solar panel, there was a debate between uh, US and uh, 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 India and there was uh, Philip Morris case, okay, Philip Morris case uh, also, all these debates got settled into through dispute settlement body, but now what is the problem? Sometimes the developed countries are not appointing their members in, in this uh, dispute settlement body. So, uh, when the members are not there, how, they, how this body will function? So, uh, this is one thing. So let me see, I think uh, we have discussed, you know, okay, we have, you know, we have tried to connect, see, the story can go, go on like this for hours and hours, there is no problem, uh, but uh, I hope that uh, kind of document and some report which is mentioned, you will try to incorporate then in, uh, in your notes and uh, do invest time in uh, quality reading, okay, see, qual reading, writing and uh, answer writing, these three things have to, till, let's say till you are not going to read the original, you know, good resource. Uh, invest time in uh, uh, national for, farmer policy. You, you will see it, you know, whether it is 2000, I, I can say even, even if it is 2025 means, no problem, invest time in that. Invest time in eco-service agriculture chapter. 
not only lift passages from that uh, and put in your notes, revise it, then you know concise them. Try to uh, try to uh, write whatever the, that particular passage has said, paragraph has said in let's say in 50 words. Try to write that thing in five words. This is the way you will get uh, conciseness. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.